Hey everybody, it's Julianne from Cary Quilting Company in Cary, North Carolina. Today is Friday, December 29th, and as a reminder, we are open today and tomorrow, 10 to 5, and then Sunday, we will be open 1 to 3, and then Monday, the 1st of January, we will be closed. So plan accordingly, so you have plenty to do on the evening of the 31st and the day of the 1st, because if you're like me, you're not going to be a big partier. <laughs> So today we have more questions and answers from our customers and viewers. Um, it's a little bit of everything, so I'm going to dive right in. The first two questions are about portrait quilts, and um, if you are a new viewer, or maybe you just don't know, um, I make portrait quilts. It's my favorite thing to do, and I published this book this year, and um, so I have quilts here that are made that are part of the book, and then I have some things that I made ahead of the book. But the two questions we have, the first one is from Susie McKinney, and she says, when choosing a photo to turn into a portrait quilt, what are your best tips and tricks to make it appear realistic? And please include techniques as well as fabric choices. So the first thing that I talk about in the book about choosing a picture is choosing a good one. This is an example of a bad picture because you've got shadows, you've got arms and legs going everywhere, you've got a bottle of water right in the front of the picture, um, you have strange um, backgrounds with lots of different color changes. So this picture would not be a good choice for a portrait quilt. I always suggest for first portrait quilts being a very clear picture in very good light, outdoor lighting is good if you don't have shadows, um, without any kind of weird movement or weird bending of feet and arms and things, just so you have have an easier, simpler something to get started with. Um, in terms of tips and techniques to make it appear realistic, my biggest tip is to turn everything upside down. So you're not trying to make a nose look like a nose and you're not trying to make an eye look like an eye. You're just making what you see. And that way, when you turn it right side up and you back up a little bit, you'll be shocked that it worked. <laughs> and I promise it works. I've done it with a lot of classes and a lot of retreats. Um, but you try not to make it look like you think it's supposed to look and really just follow the pattern that you've made for yourself. And this book has every single bit of what you need um, to start uh, with abstract quilts and then move on to more realistic quilts. So a lot of these questions are answered in the book in much more detail. Um, and another thing that I like to point out, I have two other things that kind of go along with the book. This one we call the QT True Colors panel. Um, and this will help you match colors. So for example, this picture turned into this quilt. Sorry, they don't like to hold up very well. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that. And in order to get those colors correct, I used the tool and I used the panel to help me highlight where my colors were. For example, this little tool allows you to put it right on top there, and then you can use this that you see in the square to try to match fabric. So, and same over here, like this is a very dark brown. And if you look over here, sorry, it's gonna be hard to see the color of brown that I used in the quilt matches the color of brown that I see in the picture. So that is the easiest way to ensure that your colors are going to be, quote, true, is by finding colors of fabric that really go with or match almost exactly the same colors that you have in your picture. Because a lot of times people say, eyes are white, teeth are white. They're really not. There's no Unless, you know, you've had a lot of work done. Your teeth are really not white. And if you choose a white fabric for teeth, it's going to make them look like they're being lit from within. <laughs> so I always try to do the most realistic versions of pictures that I can find. Um, and let's see. Jane says, I'm so amazed by your real life picture quilting. How did you start doing that? And it feels so beyond my abilities. It's not beyond your abilities. It does take a lot of time and a lot of dedication to detail. Like I said, this is uh, the picture of this one. And the reason I did this one is because I really liked the detail in the eyes. Uh, and even in the original picture, you can see that the shadows of his eyelashes in his eyes. It is so amazing. So um, a lot of times I pick the picture just because I want to do a quilt of it, <laughs> not because that person means anything to me because I don't even know who that is. Um, but I did want to show you um, just sort of my, my first and then my most recent. This was one of my first portrait quilts 
and um, it's of my daughter, and it was made for an American-made brand, Solids Challenge, so I could only use solid fabrics in it. Um, but I specifically did not include her face on purpose because I was terrified of trying to do a face and trying to see what it would look like. Um, but that was how I got started. And then this is one of my more recent ones. And this is um, a picture of one of my twins, one of her big brothers. And this one, I absolutely was going for every detail I could find. And I started with the peaches. And once they looked good, then I just sort of kept going. So it is within your grasp. You will be able to do it. You just have to have a lot of patience and a lot of time and a lot of love for details. But I will link to my book and to the other pieces um, in the video description today if you're interested in taking that on for yourself. And um, Michelle asks pattern or fabric first? Do you pick a pattern first or the fabric first? How do you know a pattern will work well for a fabric fabric or vice, vice versa? So I normally pick a pattern first. I think it's really just quilter dependent. Some people fall in love with fabric and then find a pattern that's going to work. And then some people fall in love with a pattern and find fabric that's going to work. I think the most important thing to think about though, when you're choosing a variety of fabrics for a quilt project is getting a variety of range of values. And I will actually link to a two minute quilter video that gives you a little tutorial on how to figure out if you've got the right value range within the fabrics that you've chosen for your quilt. I think that can absolutely make or break a quilt. If you've got all darks, all mediums or all lights, it's just going to be really hard to find uh, the interest and intrigue in a pieced quilting pattern. Um, and then we have a question about needles. So this is just a few of the options that I pulled off of our uh, notions wall. Donna Cardillo says, I always sew and quilt with an 8012 Microtex sharp needle. When would I need to use a 70 or a 90 needle? And for full disclosure, I am not a tool girl and I am not a needle girl. And if there's a needle on my sewing machine, it works. <laughs> so I'm really not the right person to ask about this, but I am going to place a link. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, it's going to be right up, right above my head over here. And if you're watching on Facebook or Instagram, uh, they'll, it will be in the description of today's video from the um, Microtex website or the Schmetz website about which needles you use in which um, applications, because obviously there are needles that are better in different situations. And um, again, I just use what's in the machine and hasn't broken yet because that's just how I am. I don't care so much about those kind of details. I care about those kind of details. Um, next up, we have two questions from people who want to know how to get started with new techniques. So Abby wants to know what advice you would give to someone who wants to machine quilt using a domestic machine. And my biggest piece of advice would be to take a class. We have um, classes here at the shop. Um, these are both domestic machine piecing samples by Kim Zabrowski, who teaches our machine, um, not machine piecing, machine quilting. Kim teaches our machine quilting classes. So these are both free motion, which means you lift up your feed dogs and you kind of push your fabric through the machine to create the designs that you want. So Kim has classes here in Cary. And then the other question was, Lupe wants to know how to start collage quilting. Um, and where does a beginner start? And this is a collage quilting sample. Lynn is our instructor for collage quilting and she's a Lara Heine certified instructor. So she uses the Lara Heine patterns and the Lara Heine methods for creating beautiful collaged quilts. So if you're not local to us and you can't take one of our local classes, check out your own local quilt shop and see what kind of classes they have. The new year is a great opportunity to learn something new or dive into a new technique because it's what keeps us young and keeps our brains going and keeps us excited about going back to the quilt store. I hope you guys have a great afternoon and we will see you back here from the shop on Tuesday. <laughs> have a happy new year. Bye.